I want to clarify what the law is there in Minnesota. Abortion Finder, a website that helps women find access, says abortion is legal throughout pregnancy in Minnesota. There is no ban or limit on abortion in Minnesota based on how far along in a pregnancy you are. You signed a bill that makes it legal through all nine months. Is that a position you think Democrats should advocate for nationally? Look, the vice president and I have been clear the restoration of Roe versus Wade is what we're asking but for. But that this law is a goes far beyond Roe v. Wade. To make her own choice. The law, does, the law is very clear. It does not change that. That has been debunked on every occasion. But, but wait, look, this wait. Is a, but let's let's, let's agree. What you win. signed is there's not a single limit through nine months of pregnancy. Roe had a trimester framework that did have limits through the pregnancy. The Minnesota law does not have that. This puts... This puts the decision with the woman and her health care providers. The situation we have is when you don't have the ability of health care providers to provide that, that's where you end up with a situation like Amanda Zaworski in Texas, where they are afraid to do what's necessary. This doesn't change anything. It puts the decision back on to the woman, to the physicians. That is not happening anywhere in the United States. It is not happening, and it's a lie. Just it's a bold faced lie that he is suggesting that can, can you imagine? Can you imagine? He is suggesting that women in their ninth month of pregnancy are electing to have an abortion. Are you kidding? That is that is so outrageously inaccurate and it's so insulting to suggest that that would be happening and that women would be doing that. It's not happening anywhere. It's, he, this guy is full of lies. I mean, I just have to be very candid with you. Vice President Kamala Harris in a wide-ranging interview with the popular podcast Call Her Daddy. And before that, you saw her running mate, Governor Tim Walz on Fox News yesterday speaking about the issues of abortion, trying to set the record straight. As reproductive health care stays at the forefront of the 2024 elections, a new documentary is taking a look at the physical and emotional toll of these abortion bans. You heard Governor Waltz mention Amanda Zaworski. The new documentary, Zaworski v. Texas, follows four women as they take on the Texas courts in an attempt to regain reproductive rights in the state. Take a look. You will hear testimony from Amanda Zaworski, whose water broke prematurely and who became septic, waiting to be eligible for an abortion. I'm going to write a W on my hand for Rilla. She's always there. All right, let's fucking do this. You will hear how Samantha Cassiano was forced to suffer the trauma of carrying a non-viable pregnancy to term, and then watched her daughter gasp for air for the four short hours of her life. You will also hear from Austin Denard, who is an OBGYN herself, and who was forced to travel out of state for an abortion after her baby was diagnosed with a fatal condition. By any measure, Texas is in a healthcare crisis. The only issue in this case, however, is who should be getting abortions under the medical exception to the state's abortion bans. And two years later, still, no one knows. And Amanda joins us now. Amanda's back on the show with us, uh, along with the film's directors, Macy Crow and Abby Perot. She uh, is joining us along uh, with Huma Abedin, who is an advisor to Hidden Light Productions, one of the companies that produced the documentary. Hidden Light Productions was co-founded by former First Lady Hillary Clinton, who serves as one of the executive producers on the film. All right, so Macy and Abby, um, in order, just... Tell us briefly, if you could, what you set out to do to accomplish in this uh, uh, documentary. Well, we wanted to understand what abortion bans meant in practice, uh, especially in a state like Texas, where we're both from. And one of the first things we asked Amanda when we began filming was what wasn't being covered um, in the media that she'd already done. And we all agreed that understanding the long term effects, traumatic effects of being denied health care was important to focus on. Abby. I think the other thing that we really felt was so important to cover is this is an issue that affects women across our country. There are 25 million women living in states with abortion bans right now. And what was so important to understand was that it's not just women being harmed, families are being harmed, families are being denied the ability to plan 
what their family looks like. And I think that's something people need to understand. Amanda, if you could remind our viewers what the outcome of your health care situation was after you struggled to get the health care that you desperately needed. Sure. Um, so unfortunately, I was suffering a miscarriage and was den denied the abortion that I needed in that moment um, and had to wait until I qualified for health care in Texas. Oh. And that meant life of the mother. So I had to wait until my life was on the line, um, went into septic shock twice, um, mm. survived that, thankfully. But my fertility, unfortunately, is permanently compromised. Amanda, I want to ask you, we were all at the Hamptons Film Festival on Saturday where the um, film was screened. We, it debuted in Telluride uh, a month ago. You've been on TV for the last two years sharing your story. We do talk about this being a health care issue, not just for American women, but their families. At the end of both screenings, I have been stunned by the silence in the room because people are so overcome with emotion. And then people just flock to you and to Maisie and Abby and uh, the other uh, uh, characters in the film. What are they saying to you? Um, overwhelming support, first and foremost. And then I'm hearing their stories because everyone has their own story, whether it's um, somebody who lives in a safe state or not in a safe state. Um, you know, they're, they're telling me about their loss, their miscarriages, their abortions, their uh, struggles to get pregnant, their experience with IVF. Everyone has a story. And by the way, it's not just women, it's men as well. Um, what we're talking about here is reproductive care, which is basic health care, and that's something that impacts every single person in this country. It certainly does. And Maisie, Abby, both of you, you know, what struck me, stri many of the things strike me in the film, but one is how hopeful you feel at the end, the sort of sense of triumph. Tell us what you hope viewers will take away from the, from the screenings. I think, I, Maisie, go for sure. I think when we set out to make the film, one of the things that was important to us was to show that there was still hope amongst all the devastation we were seeing. And we found that in Molly Duane, the lead attorney on the case. Um, and Molly and her colleagues are going to continue to fight on this front. And I think that that does bring hope to the story. And I think the women in this film bring hope because each of them made a very difficult decision to share such private, intimate moments of their lives. And it, I am in awe of them because they continue to bear the truth out and uh, speak and continue to speak. And that's what we need to hear right now. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Macy, where can people see this if they would like to see it? We're doing a number of screenings uh, throughout the month, both at film festivals and impact screenings in various states. Right now, you can go to our website, Zorowski v. Texas, to find that list of screenings, which will be updated daily. Yeah, we're playing so in... So, Amanda... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, we're bringing the film to as many communities as possible, to states where bans are in place, to states where abortion is on the ballot, and it's so crucial people understand the real impact of what's happening in their state. And Amanda, I'd like to know, um, when you saw the entire doc, uh, w what your feelings were, and are you hopeful, especially given what these bans have actually, how they have impacted your life? Um, seeing the film for the first time was surreal, I will admit, um, but these filmmakers did such a beautiful job. What you see on screen is exactly what I lived, what I experienced, um, mm. and I think that's true of my co-plaintiffs and, and our attorney as well, and I think when other folks see it, you know, we hear about these stories, but to see the long-term effects and to see them on screen, I think really has a different and profound impact, and I think um, between the four of us, everyone in America is going to see a little bit of themselves um, on that screen and in each of us. And I'm definitely hopeful. Um, you know, it started, it started small and we're seeing this kind of uh, groundswell across the country of additional people speaking up and speaking out and fighting back. You can find out more information about screenings for the documentary at www.zaroskivtexas.com. Macy Crow, Abby Perot, Amanda, Amanda Zaroski, thank you so much uh, for being a part of this. And Huma Abdeen, of course, thank you as well.